Okay. Let's start things off here there, folks. Well, welcome back to another 2 p.m. PST Twitch stream. I'm your host, Strange Bird Jim, and we are going to be trying once again to get into... Uh, well, I'm... I attempted to uh, log into Pega or show the process of setting up Pega yesterday, um, which, um, yeah, um, didn't really work for me. Um, I contacted them, the, the, you know, the support team at Pega, and they said, hey, we, sh you know, should be able to do it. So, <clears throat> not quite sure what happened there, but, um, so I tried again earlier and I got it to work. So, um, so now I have a profile in there. Now, uh, one of the things that, uh, concerns me a little bit is that it sounded to me like, uh, you know, as as I was stating yesterday, um, I've, okay, uh, for anybody that's watching this on YouTube, I deleted that because there wasn't anything there. Uh, um, so if you're if you're watching this, you know, and you're like, uh, Jim, there's what are you talking about? What do you mean yesterday? This is the first video. Um, I just want to let you know that you know. Uh, I couldn't get anywhere. <laughs> I couldn't, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to go on my company profile to um, to go through the academy because I'd already done some modules on there. And, um, you know, I wanted to kind of start from, start fresh. Um, so, um but one of the concerns that I had was the fact that um, they mentioned that some of the, because it's not a company profile, um, this is a personal account, uh, some of the um, um, some of the features that they have are going to be limited. So um oh wait i picked the wrong scene collection <laughs> oops um be right back let me let me switch real quick okay sorry about that okay um so um So I'm going to be doing the, um, you know, I'm going to be kind of focused on, you know, I won't, well, I'll, I'll try to show a little bit of the uh, setup and the like, um, again, just in case anybody's kind of curious about it. Uh, and then we'll uh, proceed into starting up some modules. So, um, if you're joining me for the first time, thank you. Uh, welcome. Hopefully, I help in some ways in the process of this. Um, I'm, you know, uh, I will state, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Pega instructor. You know, I'm not being endorsed by Pega or anything along those lines. This is just my attempt to um, get my certification for PEGA. And if I can get other people to that same goal, then then that's good. I see that as a win for everybody. Uh, you know, you know, I get I get the certification at the end, and you know, you the viewer, you know has this as a um, potential to 
you know, work at your own pace or use it as a means to learn a little bit more. Um, now, um, I do feel like, you know, uh, everybody should, you know, if, if you want the certification, you should sign up, get that set up, you know, how you want it to be. Um, and then, um, you know, travel at your own pace if you want to. Uh, you don't have to follow along with me. But, um, you know, I would like, you know, I want to run the company. So, um, so if you want to join me, uh, I welcome you to the chat and, you know, any additional communications and the like. So, um, all right. So, uh, let's see. Um, get myself kind of situated here at this moment in time. Okay. Um, okay, it's not showing the window. That's fine. Let's try this again. Window capture. I might have to do this every day. <laughs> uh, yes, that's what I want. There we go. And now we're going to stretch that to screen. There we go. All right. So, um, let me go ahead and move. Um, let me move this up here. There we go. So it's kind of out of the way for the most part. You guys can see the web page, you know, and everything here. You don't necessarily need to see my name <laughs> or anything along those lines. So there you go. Um, uh, but um, here, let me let me quickly log out real quick. Um, now. Uh, up here, you'll see uh, this right up here, uh, which, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hiding the message that's being popped up there. Um, so it's saying, you know, log in or sign up. So, um, you know, if. All right. Well, um, there's some information for you. I guess I'll have to try to edit that. Um, but it goes into the um, sign up information really should have been clear, but whatever. Um, so, but that will you know, if you if you do the sign up, you know, sign in and all that jazz, then um, um, you know, you should have some. You know, you should be able to sign in. Um, you know, if necessary, contact Pega. If you're having some difficulties, maybe they just need to. You know, check off a box in their back in their database or something like that saying we'll allow this person I don't know uh, they mentioned the fact that there are going to be some things in my particular profile seeing that it's personal uh, that aren't going to be available which is fine you know I don't mind if it's if it's limited okay um, but you know, I'm I'm hoping that the academy, the the modules, are still going to be available to ed anybody that wants to sign up. If it's not, well, you know, 
they're sh I feel like they're shooting their themselves in the, their own foot there. So, all right. Um, so what we uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working on the system architect certification, working towards the system architect art, uh, certification. I haven't gotten it yet. Um, been very close to it. Um, last my last attempt i missed like six questions on on the minimum so now i'm i'm not saying that's great but um but unfortunately there was also some questions on the certification test that were pre 8.6 and were never covered in our training so, um, so yeah, I, I was kind of upset about that, but you know, not much I could really do about it. Um, they didn't necessarily want my, uh, they, you know, Peggy didn't come to our, our particular training course and ask for feedback afterwards. So, um, which I feel is a, um, I mean, if they're watching this right now, it's great that you go to a training course and say, hey, you know, thank you for joining our training course. You know, you're going to love our product, blah, 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 right? You should also come at the very, you know, the, like, the, you know, we saw like the CEO and, and like lead project manager for Peyo, whatnot, you know, at the very beginning of our training course. They should have came at the very end of our training course at the same time, and, you know, at the end and asked for feedback. And we would have given it to them. We would have given a lot of feedback to them because, um, well, we had some problems and um, it would have probably been in their best interest if they heard it directly from us on that and come in with a certain amount of humility about, you know, uh, what we bring as students, but they didn't do that. So, um, if they're, if they're watching this now, then consider that in the future if you have a train course coming at the very beginning coming at the very end you know uh you know you know praise your product at the very beginning that's fine you know no problem on that comment at the very end for feedback you know uh consider it like um uh previews for movies you know they get an audience in to watch a movie, you know, before it's officially released. They get their audience feedback. The audience says what they like and what they don't like about it. And, you know, and if it's like completely negative or if there's like some parts that, you know, weren't enjoyed by the audience, like maybe there's some confusion about like a particular character or something like that, or they hated the ending, then then the you know studio could kind of go back and try to fix it you know they give themselves some wiggle room to handle that um sometimes it's a rush job but whatever same kind of thing for for this you know if you have if you're trying to release a product or you know you're you're trying to promote a product you know promote it and then try to get feedback. That pretty much goes for any, anything, really. <laughs> um, okay. But after you sign up, you know, you'll have your profile and you'll have access to the Pega Academy. Uh, I'll be going for the system architect because, well, I'm a computer science major. You know, I know Java, I know C. Uh, I've learned other languages, you know, I've dabbled in other languages, you know, dabbled in Python, learned cold fusion, um, learned HTML, you know, so on and so forth. So 
Um, so this is where my main focus is. This is where my interest lies. Now, for anybody that doesn't necessarily have that background and they might not be interested in that, you can try for the business architect. Okay, that's more for you know project management or communications. You know, um, they're they're basically the um, you might consider them like the middleman between like pure business trying to get you know the product out there and us the um, programmers the technicians and stuff like that you know the people that are heavy into the code okay they're kind of like in the middle they're trying to get what the you know business wants and tries to you know uh, tries to relay it to us so that we'll like oh okay well we need to handle it this way and you know vice versa you know we might say well we can't necessarily do that you're gonna have to tell business that you know we can't we can't do it that way we're gonna have to do it maybe another way give them these options or whatever you know that kind of thing so they're you know they're kind of meant to be more like the middleman than than anything else so they still learn you know a little bit about what peg is all about but they're not like uh, they're not like jumping in depth into the code so um and business architect is very close to the very beginnings of what the system architect module can do there's there's like maybe two modules that business architect does that's different than the system architect and the system architect just you know goes even further in depth so um you know these are other possibilities that you can go for um but um you know my my main focus is trying to get that system architect certification so um so if you want to try these be my guest um i haven't you know i don't I don't know how much of a demand there is out there for this. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, um, prior to my training, I didn't even hear about Pega prior to this. So, um, so uh, I haven't seen very much demand for it out there, but I'm not saying that there isn't any demand out there it's just i haven't seen much demand so i don't know uh, maybe i just wasn't looking in the right spots maybe uh, hard to say um so um you know uh feature missions uh different languages you know they have they have additional trainings that you can go with so um so what we want to do is we want to you know go to our and go to our dashboard here um all right i need to sign back in uh one second let me let me fill all that out live there we go okay so here we are in the dashboard here now um they have you know recommended trainings um they have new training um you know and you can add your own in there as well now um let's see um I'm trying to 
trying to remember a few certifications. Okay, so, um, you know, here is the listing of certifications that PEGA offers. Um, you have the PEGA business architect, you know, the middleman that I was talking about, and, you know, the current mission that you can do as well as the certification exam. Uh, you have your basic system architect uh, that you can do for, for that. It's currently 8.7, so there you go. Uh, you have the Certified Senior System Architect, which is obviously um, a more advanced version of the System Architect. So, um, you know, once I get the certification here, then I can attempt to go for the Senior System Architect. Um, you know, this is going to be... Um, diving more in depth into, um, you know, activities and structures and so on and so on, so on and so forth. So I'll, I'll get that out later, but, um, so, uh, potentially I could, we could, you know, study for this as well, um, later. Um, so, this is, you know, like obviously the most advanced that you can try to go for. Um, so this one's going to be a little difficult to get to, but I mean, that's, that's also, you know, as, as they mentioned, you know, after certified PEGO senior architect. So, um, so if, if someone really wants to learn PEGA, you know, you want to get to the lead system architect, you know, uh, learn everything that you can out of PEGA and get to this lead system architect. Um, I don't know what the uh, past requirements are for this, so, um, but I would imagine that it's going to be pretty extensive, so. Uh, be prepared on that one. Uh, robotic systems architect. This is more um, artificial intelligence for the most part. Um, so, uh, you know, robotic automations. Um, let's see, you have data scientist. Uh, certifications, um, simulate decision strategies, um, and then you have the decision consultant. Um, it looks like this one is a little bit more um, an event advanced for data scientist. So, I mean, but you know, they have missions for, you know, set for each one of these certifications. So you basically go to, you know, one of these missions and start it up in order to, um, potentially go for that, uh, for that exam. Now, what I'm going to do is to kind of show the difference between, you know, how close related there, you know, it is for the PEGA business and the PEGA systems architect. I'm going to select both of these missions. So I'm going to select this one. Um, we're going to go ahead and add the mission to my dashboard here. Um, and we are going to go back to the certifications again. And we're going to add the system architect. And add that to the dashboard. Um, 
Okay. Apparently, there's an 8.8 .8 version out there, but they haven't linked it yet. Um, which is odd. You would think that they'd want to um, point to their most recent version instead of pointing to the previous version. But whatever. Um, you know, um, they might not have... They might not have a certification exam set up for 8.8 .8 yet, so I'm going to leave that one alone. Uh, we're just going to go back to, you know, the dashboard here. At least try to. There we go. Oh, yeah. So uh, as you could see, uh, here's the two missions, one for the business architect and one for the system architect. Um, you know, you'll notice that um for system architect there's two missions 26 modules and 23 challenges whereas the business architect just they just have two missions and two modules and that's it so um you know their their time frame that they give which um i don't really agree with i feel like they are they're rushing the time um, as as though someone can like pick up a topic like that and move on. And it's like, that doesn't work that way. You know, everybody has their own um, reading amount. Um, you know, really, they should probably like go for, you know, a longer amount of time. So... You know, when you see one day, 50 minutes, account for more time. Um, they, they do say that, you know, it can be done in one day and 50 minutes. Uh, I mean, you can definitely try. You can definitely try to get that done in one day and 50 minutes. But there's going to be a lot of information in these. Um, and trying to process all that, trying to learn it all, trying to, you know, get it you know, saved um, is not going to be an easy task. So, um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see about trying to get both of these into different tabs here so I can kind of show, um, you know, show the, you know, the differences between the two. Um, so, uh, for business architect, um, here's here's the test. You know, to get their, um, they have like little um, rewards at the very well, not necessarily rewards. They're they're basically saying, hey, congratulations, you completed our, uh, you pra uh, you completed our practice test. You know, with this, okay. Um, and in order to get that, you have to complete, you know, their mission test. This has no bearing whatsoever to the certification test. I mean, um, you can still attempt the certification test like right now. Okay. You can, you can go in there, you can pay the money, you can, you know, set up the, uh, the process to take the certification test like right now. You know, well, not, you can't take it like right now right now you have to kind of get everything kind of set up um, um i don't know if they're still doing the remote testing process but um, um the um uh, you know that's that's how i did it last time was remote um and they might have gone back to the testing in an office situation that they did prior to COVID. Um, but I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what they, uh, how they're going to do that uh, from here on out. Um, personally, I would prefer just keeping it remote. 
Um, just trying to travel has become uh, difficult for me. So um, going to one of their locations to take a test would probably be uh, problematic. So, um, and it's probably problematic for them too, I would imagine, but okay. So, uh, as you can see, uh, for the business architect, you have the low code at builder, the low code at builder extended, the Pega express introduction and the architecture and design during the prepare phase. Uh, we'll go through all these obviously in all due time. Okay. Um, well, these these two probably not because if you look at the system architect you can see that the low code app builder and the low code app builder extended is also here available um you know the same same amount of modules same uh, challenges you know vision modules challenges same you know same for both they don't they don't change the missions you know they keep the missions the same you know they have them set you know uh, you know they have they combine all their topics in into one particular mission and they present it like to, like so and you know the business architect has has them same as the system architect so when i'm going through both of these missions you can be doing the exact same thing with the business architect so uh, so bear that in mind. However, these two modules for the business architect, uh, Pega Express introduction, that is not available in the uh, sy system architect. I'm just going through the list here just to kind of show that it's not available. It's not being, it's not being given. It's not, yeah, there's no Pega Express introduction there. Uh, neither is their architecture and design during the prepare phase. And that's also not given anywhere, you know, in my listing for the system architect. So, um, so if you're going to be going for the business architect, you're probably going to have to do that on, on your own. Okay. Now, thankfully those two modules, you know, they say this one, it can be covered in 20 minutes. They say this, this one can be covered in an hour and 30 minutes. Okay. Three topics and six, six topics. So not that very long. Um, if, if you want me to, you know, if anybody's watching this, whether it's um, through Twitch right now on, in the chat or um, via YouTube later on, let me know, okay? Let me know if you want me to cover both of these modules. Like after we get done, you know, I'm gonna be going through the low code app builder and the low code app builder extended first, okay? But if you want me to, I can do both of these modules afterwards. After both of these, I can try to get both of these done. Um, um, prior to moving on to, you know, what I need to do with the Dev Studio overview, okay, and and all that. So uh, let me know. Let me know if you are inter interested in that, okay. Um, Again, it might be, you might want to do it at your own pace. So, um, you know, you might want to just speed ahead and take care of it yourself. It's perfectly fine. Um, but let's go ahead and get into low code app builder module mission. I gotta be careful with my wording here because wording um, is important. Um, 
they're they are very precise with their well i mean it feels like they are very precise with their wording and um but at the same time um they've changed up their wording in the past as well so um you know when i said that you know they had some questions on the certification test you know i took it for 8.6 and they were there's there were questions for um you know for the you know pega seven in the certification test so i was like okay um you know these these you know the wording wasn't up to date or you know the wording was you know um uh, the running had been modified from 7 to 8.6 so um so when i took the certification test when i saw the fact that you know it was referring to one particular uh topic i didn't know what that was because it was a completely different word for 8.6 you know i did the best i could trying to figure out what what they were asking for but like i said their wording can be uh needs to be kind of precise as well so so yeah so we're we're moving on okay so first first module is their low code defined um so let's go into their first module here. Um, they typically have a module quiz after every module. Um, they have their topics here and their estimated times for each of these. Again, this is dependent on how fast you read and you know and maintain the information. You might need to redo these topics over and over and over again just to you know get the information saved so don't be afraid of doing that okay um so let's go to i mean we got we got 20 minutes left before i switch on over so let's go ahead and uh, at least get the first one done here all right so low code application development Forrester describes low-code development as products and or cloud services for application development that employ visual declarative techniques instead of programming. This de uh, development is exactly what Peg has been doing for 30 years, creating software that writes your software. Um, I mean, there's there's other application and there's other applications that have also been doing this as well. Um, Peg is just one of those that does it as well. So um, uh, they linked Forrester here. All okay. right. Uh, blog. I personally haven't, I've never seen this before. Uh, I don't really know the name off the top of my head, but then again, I've been very bad at names anyway, so yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a blog site, not necessarily a person either, so I don't know, whatever. Um, right. As you manipulate and expand the visual model, the low-code development tools create the code for you. Uh, user interface capabilities such as drag and drop, process flows, visual tools allow anyone to create transformational software regardless of technical ability. This approach enables increased productivity as everyday app development tasks are streamlined, lessening IT involvement, low code tools make application development simpler um 
so um you know they are basically trying to advocate that um you know hey uh, instead of you know having everybody trying to type out everything here um they're basically saying hey i'm gonna drag you know you know this you know i'm gonna kind of drag this onto the field and you know it will kind of generate the code for me for doing that in a very simplistic way um you know the whole uh, drag and drop you know process here and then of course you can obviously you know do some you know changes in the background to you know do what you want like maybe hey you know i want to take this and this is an actual button that i need to click on or something like that i'm going to drop it right there i'm going to be able to click on it same kind of same kind of mentality on this that's what you know the low code is um meant to be all about whereas um if you didn't have like that drag and drop mental you know uh, ability um you would have to actually build that button through code itself you know trying to describe you know what it looks like you know um uh the text that displays the width and height of the button you know is it depressed or, you know is it um sunken in or is it you know uh pushed out you know uh you're, you're trying to uh write out the code for every single last little detail about this button whereas you know for drag and drop you know you just kind of grab it you put it there you can adjust it on the screen to you know uh to you know uh show what you want to kind of do with it and then um you know and then of course you can go in there and say hey i want the text to be this i want it to function like like you know and when i click it it says it pops up a window and says hi or you know whatever you know that kind of thing um that's that's what they're trying to go for overall you know in very simplistic terms in this so um they they want to get to a point where um you know you don't need you know when uh, if you if you want to build an application you want to be able to try to get you know quickly built and out the door as fast as you can without any problems to it um, so now is that um, that might be great on the business side of things but uh, as a programmer that does all the programming uh, there's there can be some complications with that too because you are limited by the tool and um, the tool might say hey no you can't do this so you have to figure out how to work either work with it or work around it so um, and I mean that that kind of goes for pretty much anything really you know um, you know you you might figure some way of changing the tools intended purpose into doing something that um, um, that you know wasn't their intention but it works for you so um you know um and then they might take that information and you know uh use it to um make a better tool later who knows
right? Uh, innovation. Okay, so uh, traditional development tools present applications as text heavy code as shown in the following image. So, um, so this is a little bit interesting because um, Um, I'm trying to, uh, you know, some of the, it's not every day that you see SQL inside, um, you know, inside your, um, you know, inside the language itself. So, um, or, you know, not, not that often. So, but yeah, um, kind of reminds me of Cold Fusion to be honest. <laughs> um, so, but, um, so here's their visual for their low code environment. So in, cro uh, in contrast, low code development tools provide a visual environment to create applications as shown in the following image. So this is their case life cycle um, this is, you know, what they can, you know, uh, this is how they want to kind of show, or, you know, this is the, the flow of the process from start, you know, like when the customer first comes in or, you know, hops onto a web page or something along those lines to the very end, you know, the destination on which, you know, you, you know, the customer like you know made their front end purchase and you know they leave or something along those lines you know uh, or there could be you know additional steps afterwards you know it it all depends on you know what your objective is for your application you know what um you have to kind of write down you know step one customer comes in or customer gets on the web page step two they fill out their um personal information or something along those lines, you know, whatever, you know, this is, this is kind of like a step-by-step -step process of, you know, um, how the customer interacts with your application to get to the very end. Okay. And we'll cover more about this later, but this is a, um, this is a visual representation of their case life cycle. Um, that they uh, have been advocating for, you know, we we studied this quite a bit in our training. So um, this is like the majority of what you're most likely going to be seeing for the system architect. So uh, the value of low code. Creating powerful software is vital to organizations as the need for rapid transformation outpaces the traditional one-size-fits-all approach, where large teams of developers build proprietary solutions. Low-code application development platforms help bridge the gap between business stakeholders and skilled developers, creating, uh, creating a common visual language to collaborate more effectively. Teams that work with low-code tools are more agile, deliver value more rapidly, and work with stakeholders more effectively. Collaborating with stakeholders in a common visual language allows you to focus on explaining the business logic rather than the code. With shortened feedback loops, teams become more productive, freeing limited resources to tackle the ever-expanding backlog of projects. Um, so, um, you know, they're, what they would like to do is they would ha like to have um, uh, you know, people that aren't, you know, dealing with code on a daily basis, you know, that don't have computer science degrees, that, you know, aren't basically saying, oh yeah, you know, you want to, you know, uh, if you want to do 
an if else statement? Do you want to do a switch? Do you want to do a do while loop? If, you know, everything I've said to you, you know, if you're not a programmer, you're going to be like, what did you just say? You know, um, you're going to be like kind of scratching your head, right? Um, they want someone that, you know, you basically take someone off the street, you know, never even programmed like a lick of code whatsoever. They want them to be able to uh, make this case life cycle, you know, um, and make it easy for them to do so. Okay. Um, now, you know, I can still kind of go in there and tweak everything in there to do, maybe do it a little bit more efficiently or, you know, help them out if they get stuck on certain uh, certain steps, you know, if they're trying to go for something very specific, um, that, you know, it's, it might not be completely covered in the case life cycle, then, you know, then you kind of call me in to, to try to help iron those details out a little bit more. Okay. But they're trying to, um, they're, the the idea is they want you know someone off the street to be able to handle this case life cycle you know uh, you know what we're seeing like right there um they want them to handle that you know from off the street and then i kind of go on you know they they ask me to handle everything that everything else in the background if there's anything that you know really needs to be ironed out in some fashion or another. You know, maybe there's a database, maybe there's a web page, maybe there's very specific details that need to be handled, you know, that kind of thing. You know, that's that's what I'm gonna be there for to kind of handle, you know, a lot of the background information. So so yeah. You know that's that's what they you know the value of the low code that's that's what that's kind of all about they're trying to um you know give you know uh the large team of developers you know uh they're giving us the harder jobs you know whereas you know they're they're giving the you know they're trying to give the business people the tools to, you know, do what they want, to visually see what they want to do, that kind of thing. So, building with low-code tools. Many users think that a simple, easy to understand visual development tool is limited to creating a very simple applications on par with something you could implement in a spreadsheet. Pegasus low-code platform can be used to create very robust applications in a myriad of channels. For example, a marketing team uses a shared spreadsheet to capture and track requests. Using low-code tools in Pega Platform, the marketing team can build an email and web-based request system with reporting for request visibility, notifications for collaboration, and service level agreements, SLA, tracking to ensure that, that, works, and that work is finished on time. Um, this SLA comes in a lot, so remember service level agreement. That will come in, and that will come. Uh, that will re be repeated. Pegasus low code technology allows you to build an application that captures data and it initiates business processes. What might surprise you is the application can be a web page, a mobile application, or a chatbot that interacts with your client over Facebook mes Messenger. They're just giving examples here. Information can be extracted from an incoming email or a robot pulling data from other software solutions. The power of Pegasus low code technology allows you to create an application where you can interact with your users in the channel of their choice. With omni channel development capabilities, organizations can unify their development activities for all the required channels rather than maintain. Uh, disparate lines of code. 
users are a great source of data, but the data that is needed is often located in another system. Through, uh, through a visual interface, Pega platform empowers users to build integrations to these systems to obtain the data necessary to drive the process forward. Pega platform assists users by graphically mapping data into the application for a holistic view of the data landscape. Uh, low code and developers. Pega's visually driven end-to-end -end application development tools make everyone more productive, citizen developers and professional developers alike. While low code enables the non-developer to create application code, it also allows experienced developer to write code more rapidly and effectively. To enable citizen developers with additional functionality to meet your organizational needs, Pega Platform Application Development Studios enables developers to dive deeper to craft a solution to the business problem, hiding the implementation and visualizing the business logic for others to consume. With patterns for reuse and extension build built into the Pega Platform, developers can build a solution once, uh, build a solution once and leverage it many times throughout the entire ecosystem. So, you know, um, this, so, you know, the case life cycle up here, you know, they want to, you know, they want um, the, you know, as they call it, citizen developers um, to be able to build this and if they need another application, they can make a brand new one, okay? And they can still use a lot of the same kind of functionality. This is this this right here can be done over and over and over again. Now you know, and it can be done like for like different web pages, different applications. You know, uh, the the steps would be different. The language would, might be different. You know, they might be uh, as they mentioned up here. Um, you know, they might be trying to do a web page, a mobile application, or a chatbot. You know, um, you know, and that might be the different life cycles that that is done here. Okay, so um, you know, you might want to do a bank, or maybe you're doing a cash register kind of application or something like that. Maybe you want to do. Um, like a takeout menu or something along those lines, you know, like um, someone's going to a web page and they want, you know, to like order some food or something along those lines. You know, this is all, um, you know, these are just, you know, ideas that I'm just kind of coming up with that, you know, they, they're trying to get um, the low code uh, to the point where you can kind of do it very quickly, okay? You know, um, you know, they wouldn't want, and they wouldn't need me to go, hey, I need to set the priority to normal, you know, and I need to add that to every single task or something like that, you know? Um, you know, they want their citizen developers to be able to go, okay, I'm adding a task to this list, you know, where the priority is normal, or the priority might be low, the priority might be high. You know, they can change things, you know, as a citizen developer, okay? Um, they want to try to get it to that point where um, they're not necessarily relying on me, the programmer, to write out each one of these new tasks each and every single time so that's that's the mindset of it so um so that's kind of what the uh low code is kind of meant for um Okay, that's...
Weird. I'm kind of curious what's going on here. There's multiple versions of low code defined here. Eight point five, eight point six, and eight point seven. Oh yeah, <laughs> they they really should clean that up. <laughs> um, well, I you know I don't know. Uh, I say that, but um, as I mentioned before, I've been hit with, you know, like as I mentioned before, you know, I've been hit with wording that they've changed. So, so in some cases, I'm, I'm happy that they're kind of keeping the old, old modules so that you can kind of see, uh, what's been changed, but at the same time, um, it's, um, it leaves a lot of legacy software that could be confusing to others. So, I mean, I'm I'm kind of confused by their labeling here. They really should say, you know, low code defined, you know, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7. Um, you know, have it have it defined by their, you know, application, not by, you know, version two. If you can see down here at the very bottom there, you know, version three and version four. That means nothing to me. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, okay. Right. Um, well, that's about as much as we can cover. Uh, we'll go on to the next topic after this. Um, you know, we'll uh, head on back to our low code defined, uh, and we will cover the next topic integrating with external applications tomorrow. Um, so um, now there sometimes you have a topic that will have a quiz um, with, yeah, there we are. They sometimes have like a little quiz at the very end of the, um, of that particular module uh, or the mission, you know, so um, don't, you know, be prepared to, you know, know, you know, what you're doing so that you can answer these questions properly. And there might be multiple questions here. Um, more often than not, the, um, you know, these, um, you know, these particular, uh, modules are, um, or the, you know, these particular topics will only have like one particular question for that. Okay, it's the module quiz that typically has, you know, multiple questions. Um, you know, topics typically, you know, may, they may not have any, as you saw, you know, the low code application might not have any, um, or it might have one or two, or it might have more. You know, it all depends on the topic, so. Um, so yeah, uh, okay, that's going to be it for our, uh, study session here. I'm going to switch on back over to webcam. We're going to close on down here. Um, you know, so, um, you know, I'm going to be putting this video out on YouTube. Um, you know, I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to get it so that I can set this up, um, like tomorrow, uh, when I, when I upload it tonight, I'll try to get it kind of set up. So, um, it's, you know, I'll, I'll try to get it. So it'll be out not tomorrow, but the next day. So Thursday, I'll see about trying to get it like out on Thursday on my YouTube channel. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.